Have you ever wondered what the natural endpoint of AI in healthcare really is? And I'm not talking about the Matrix or the Terminator. Rather, as AI's capability continues to increase and as healthcare's acceptance of AI continues to increase, are we heading for a day where back office processes like Revenue Cycle, for example, are now completely 100% automated? It's really not that hard to imagine, right? It, AI listening to what we say in the exam room, magically turning that visit into the correct codes, and then sending those codes off without error to the right payer. Are we heading for that day? Well, that's a question I plan on asking my next guest. Hello and welcome to Healthcare IT Today. I'm Colin Hung, and joining me today on the program is Michael Quinn, Vice President of Strategic Partner Development at Innovalon. Michael has agreed to sit down with me and allow me to ask him tough questions. Questions that we don't tend to ask and maybe we shy away from because, well, they're tough to ask and they're tough to answer. Let's get to it. Mike, welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you for having me today, Colin. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited. I, 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 we love our friends at Innovalon, and I'm really excited to do this format of interview today. But before we tell the audience what that is, Mike, maybe you can give us a quick overview of your role at Innovalon and a little bit about what Innovalon does. Sure. So uh, my name is Michael Quinn. Thanks for, again, having me. So um, I am the vice president of our strategic partner division within Innovalon. So Novalon, I'll give a little overview on, on the Novalon in a minute, uh, but we have several divisions. I work within the provider division, so where we focus is primarily delivering clearinghouse services, transaction services, payment services to providers and to other healthcare IT entities. And so a strategic partner for us is companies like us, they're EMR companies, practice management companies, clearinghouses. So I focus on building those relationships and the integrations and supporting those entities as they take our services and deliver them out to, to market on, on their behalf. And then Innovalon in general, uh, we are a, a payer data insights uh, organization. So we work with the gamut across all of healthcare from actually working with payers and helping understand their member profiles and helping identify quality and gaps in care and risk measures. Uh, we also focus on a uh, specialty pharmacy, uh, EHR platform, uh, as well as looking at our other data insights and helping other entities and, and uh, biologics and pharma and life sciences as well. I'm excited for today, like I said, because this is a format of interview that I don't get a chance to do a lot of. So first of all, thank you for agreeing to do this. And, and what I'm referring to is this is one of those tough questions interviews. Oh boy. Uh, and yeah, this is going to be fun because basically we, we haven't shared with you uh, anything about what we're going to ask. And we're going to ask uh, questions that uh, are on the minds, I think, of people um, who look at the revenue cycle industry or re look at revenue cycle organizations, but might be a little bit afraid <laughs> to ask these questions. So we're going to be the surrogate. We're going to ask them on their behalf. Uh, and uh, these are questions that I'm certainly very curious to hear your answers for. So I'm looking forward to diving in. All right, let's go. All right. So question number one for you, Mike. Uh, there's no doubt that AI is the topic du jour, right? It is literally everywhere on Boo, social media, articles. Uh, it is uh, you know, going to transform, if you believe the headlines, transform healthcare as we know it. But, but is it? Is AI actually generating any meaningful ROI for healthcare right now? And in particular, is AI generating any ROI for revenue cycle? All right. Tough question. Yes, that is a very, I agree, very topical question. It is, I agree, everywhere we look, uh, whether you're a consumer, whether you're a provider, whether you're a health IT vendor, anywhere we are bombarded with AI. I think there is benefit to AI, and I will I'll qualify that a little bit. Um, I think from just the cynical side of me, whenever I see something in mass across the entire world, again, like we talked about, we can't escape it. To me, I always have to apply a little bit of a filter, like how real is this or 
or how much of this is a buzzword and everyone's just trying to feel like they're not being left out and have to get into the game. So I think that's kind of the, the my first thoughts on it. I, I think the term is widely used. I, I think it's um, as good as it is. I, I think it's it's a little bit of a crutch for for some organizations. And where I think the value really starts to unpeel is looking more succinctly at what does AI mean? Yes, we have AI. Okay, but what? So what does AI specifically do within any organization? And so. If you think about AI, what it means, artificial intelligence. So it's it's using data, mapping, data language, computer programming to think like a human. Uh, and oftentimes it's very beneficial because computers have access to far more database points than a human has in any given capacity and far more computing power. So that's very good, but it's also very powerful and it can, it can be a good outcome or it could be a bad outcome based on the data points that they're pulling from. So I think when you start to, again, break that down a little bit, how is the AI being used? What is it being used for? Specifically in the context of RCM, RCM is a very process-driven um, flow. So if a patient comes in, there are certain things that have to be done. There has to be eligibility check. There has to be maybe demographics verification. Depending on the service, maybe you want to have some kind of feeling that this patient's actually able to pay for the services that you're about to provide them because they're very expensive. Maybe this patient's eligible for financial aid or assistance from uh, Medicaid or other types of programs that you'd want to also take advantage of for the benefit of your organization, but also for the patient. So then from that standpoint, it's the, the scene of the, the, the patient, and that leads to the, the creation of the claim, the processing of the claim, maybe applying certain business rules or payer edits that are specific by a payer, maybe even specific to an NPI level. And then it's submitting the claim, getting the payment back, and then how to process or apply that payment. So very process-driven uh, flow. And I think, and where we've approached this from an AI perspective is where do we learn that flow, how do we understand what the natural and correct process is? And then how can we help mimic that? So as a new, a new employee comes into a hospital, for example, maybe they don't have a lot of you know, patient financial assistance or patient access background. We can build programs that intuitively help lead to the next step, right? So first thing you do is you check eligibility. Then the next thing you do is you know see if there's a deductible. Then you collect the deductible. So that is where we're focusing on AI within our specific provider business unit, which ties to RCM. Does that make sense, Colin? I feel like that was a simple question that I really took a long time to answer. <laughs> no, it's fine. And I'm glad you threw in there sort of the, the description of the RCM process because, uh, you know, like I said, part of me asking these tough questions is because some people are afraid to. And I'm sure there's somebody out there who doesn't know what RCM means, uh, who's working in the healthcare industry. And, and now you've just described it. So I'm sure you're helping them. So no, well, that was, RCM that was too has lots of different meanings. I mean, it all based <laughs> on revenue cycle management, but even within our industry, even within line of business, so post-acute to acute to maybe it's a billing service organization. There's there's lots of different meanings around that phrase or that acronym. So I did want to touch on it a little bit. So so I can just uh, sort of paraphrase what you just said or what I heard here, feed that back to you. What I heard you say was when there's a mega trend like AI, you're naturally skeptical that it's going to do everything it's claiming to do. It's going to achieve what it's claiming to achieve. Uh, but you're saying because uh, the RCM process has a lot of standardized workflows and uh, very set processes, that there is potential for AI to be very, very um, helpful and have a tremendous ROI in this particular area. Did I sort of capture that right? Sounds so much better when it comes from you, but yes, absolutely. I, I think that's 100% correct. I think the, 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 the main thesis is ask questions. You know, AI, that's fantastic, but AI, but then what? How, how does it you know, work within what you do to benefit me? All right. Well, Mike, let's move to the second question, which actually is also AI related. Uh, this is also a very tough question um, and, and perhaps a little bit more of a philosophical one. So, you know, you just said that, that um, there are a lot of repeatable, definable processes in healthcare. 
Um, those are obviously very good candidates for automation, which is something that AI is really accelerating. I mean, we've had robotic process automation for a long time, but now with the popularity and the availability of AI tools, this is now on steroids, right? It's on the super bullet train speeds at, at how fast we can implement these things. So given all of this, Mike, in your opinion, are we heading for a day when RCM is completely automated, that there is no person needed. You simply talk to the ambient voice in the doc speaks that voice in the room, magic of AI then takes that, codes it, sends it, and then the money comes in. Is that our future? I certainly hope not. I, I, I really hope not. I think to some degree, and there's different viewpoints on who you ask. If you ask the leader, uh, the CEO of a major multi-billion dollar organization, they might have one aspect or one view of that 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 question. If you talk to um, a billing person in the office managing a staff of billers or patient schedulers, they might have a very different question, certainly on the clinical side too, which we're not going to focus on here. But um, I, I, I hope not, and, and I don't think so. And I don't think so because... If we were to ever get to that point, it's many, 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 many years away. I mean, certainly we've seen some, some very neat things with AI. Certainly we've seen some very scary things with AI. And again, it's all built upon this prior knowledge, this prior database. And so where I think we can leverage that technology to be helpful, I don't think we can ever, nor should we ever replace human intervention and humans continuing to contribute to that data pool, right? At some point, if we don't continue to have humans being in control of the intellectual property, of the new technology, of learning, of research, of new innovations, at some point, we're just recycling the same information and, and you know, hundreds of millions of terabytes. And I don't think that's a, a very good outcome. Plus, there's always exceptions. There always is what happens if this. There's there's always an if then. And if you think about the, um, you know, compare that to other industries, because some industries have been very, you know, as typical, more advanced in this in this aspect than, than healthcare has been for a number of reasons. But you know, there's always a customer support helpline if you're trying. You know, it's tax season, so everyone's you know on. Uh, you know, TurboTax trying to do their their AI driven tax return, right? So that's a great example of tax returns. But if something goes wrong, you can call someone and, and ask for assistance. If if you're in the healthcare setting, something goes wrong. It's a very different set of consequences, right? The timing could be very different. It could be life or death situations for someone. It could be just making sure the revenue continues to flow so patients can continue to be seen our employees at physician offices and hospitals can continue to, to, to get paid and feed their families and, and live their lives. So I, I, I don't think there'll ever be, nor should I think there'll ever be a situation where humans are completely you know, removed from, from the flow. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to agree with you, uh, not because I'm looking for job security, but but because the, the AI as we know it today uh, is mostly smart because of what it's been trained on, right? And so when we introduce new CPT codes, we introduce new types of claims, new types of exceptions, or new rules from, uh, you know, from the payers, uh, new diseases that, that come through. I mean, the AI is not going to have anything to, to base that on, right? Because they're new, <laughs> they're novel. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so so we're going to need something, someone there to to really uh, make those interpretations so that eventually it can learn and do it and, and eventually be good at it. But but that, that as you put it, there's always exceptions. Um, you know, we are human beings. Uh, everyone is unique. And so there might be a situation where, you, you know, 99.99% of the time it's this. But, you know, do you want, to be that 0.01% person <laughs> and and have it do something, at least from an ROI standpoint, have it, you know, error out and then your payer is not going to pay, right? Or or the, or the hospital is not going to get their money. So uh, you always want to have someone there to at least handle the exceptions. Well, Mike, you've been a great sport uh, for uh, putting up with my three tough questions. Uh, I'll let you, I'll let you have the final word. Mike, just sound off. What is it that you want to highlight? Is there anything you want to you want to summarize? What, what's the main point that you want people to walk away uh, from 
today? Yeah, no, um, thank you for that, Colin. So I, I think the main point is, despite the challenges we've recently had and, and displayed there, uh, you know, it's certainly it's been a tough Q1 in the healthcare space, but it's also a very exciting time in healthcare. So we, we talk about AI, certainly there is a tsunami moving towards that, that path you know, embrace it, but also ask questions. Think about how you work within your organization or your practice, wherever you might be sitting right now, and what are your needs? And then craft your asks and craft your strategy and your business plan around those needs and, and work to find those answers. Work to find the right healthcare IT partners that will listen to you, consult with you, understand what you're doing and, how, and, and have a genuine interest to help you. And I think you'll be, be just fine. Awesome. Mike, last question for you. Where can people go to find out more information about Innovalon? All right. We well, can go to our uh, public website, innovalon.com. And from there, you'll be able to learn all about the different aspects of our organization from our payer business, our data insights business, our pharmacy EHR business, and our provider business. Uh, you'll also find lots of great information about studies we're doing with CMS and Medicare on the payer side and other um, use case stories, testimonials of, of, you know, folks who have, you know, leveraged some of the technology that we've talked about here today and how it's been helpful. Amazing. Well, Mike, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much again for being willing to sit down for these three tough questions. It's been great having you on the program. Well, no, I, I appreciate it. Not many people will sit down and talk to me for 30 minutes. So uh, I thank you, Colin. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Hey, I want to thank Mike for coming on camera with me and answering those tough questions. It really isn't an easy thing to do. And I certainly appreciated his answers about AI being a great fit for RCM processes, but that we aren't necessarily on a path to 100% automation. We still need people to handle the changes and the unique situations that pop up all the time in healthcare. And hey, if you enjoyed this interview as much as I enjoyed being part of it, please like and subscribe. Also, head on over to healthcareittoday.com for more great content like this. I'm Colin Hung. Thanks for being here, and I'll catch you on the next episode.